It's another great day at Asheville Distilling Company, and I'm so glad you're here with us. I'm Troy Ball, and I'm the founder of Asheville Distilling Company. People ask me all the time, how in the world did you get into making moonshine whiskey? And you know, it's been an interesting road, I have to admit. It's the last thing I ever would have expected I would be doing in my life. Um, when we moved to Asheville with our family, we bought some land up in the mountains. And the old timers, if they like you, they bring you moonshine. You get moonshine instead of cookies. But often that moonshine is burning hot. It's not exactly the kind that they keep at home for themselves. An 80-year-old man who was a friend of ours named Forrest brought me a jar of Keeper Moonshine one day. And he said, Troy, I have something special for you. And I said, if it's another jar of moonshine, I don't want it. And he said, no, 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 this is the good kind, Troy. Please promise me you'll try it. So I said, okay, okay, later today, maybe. So these girlfriends of mine were coming over that same night. And I asked them, I said, would you guys like to taste some um, good moonshine? And they're like, we didn't know there was such a thing. I said, well, I didn't either, but it was proven to me today. They drank the whole jar. <laughs> it was shocking and it was delicious. And so the next morning I woke up and I said, I wonder if I can buy the good kind of moonshine in the, in the ABC store. So I went down and bought the few products that were available and they were not that kind of product. They were um, either burning hot or they were a neutral grain spirit kind of masquerading as a um, moonshine product. So I immediately started thinking, wow, what if we could make American cocktails with America's white spirit, America's white whiskey, moonshine. I thought, that's something worth pursuing. So I called Forrest back and I said, Forrest, please, I, I really want to learn how to make moonshine. Do you think you could talk one of the old timers into teaching me? And he said, Troy, you, you're nuts. These guys aren't going to talk to you. I finally found a guy who knew how to make great whiskey. I learned from him. He was very patient with me and he described exactly how to build the still, et cetera, et cetera. So I came home and I told my husband, we need to build a still. He's like, you're nuts, you're nuts. Where, where, what are you thinking? Where are you gonna do this? In our basement in the middle of you know, Asheville, North Carolina, I said, well, you know, we have some property in the mountains. Maybe we could find an old barn out there and I could do some testing because I wanted to prove to myself I could make a great whiskey prior to investing a fortune in building a distillery. I needed to find white corn. And I was introduced to a man by the name of John McIntyre. Once I had discovered John and his Crooked Creek corn, we started doing test distillations at the little distillery. First, we used the five gallon pressure cooker that my engineer husband, Charlie, helped us fabricate. And then we made an old whiskey barrel still. It was made out of whiskey barrels just like this one. It was kind of cool. And then we migrated to this little still, which was our first copper still. I mean, that was a real upgrade for us. We tested white corns against yellow corns. We tested diff different milling techniques. We tested sugar recipes versus no sugar recipes. So for about a year, John and I just did test after test after test. We graduated to a big boy still from the little stills. Um, this is a 5,000 liter German still and thank goodness my husband's an engineer because as you can see, this is a complicated piece of equipment. It holds about 1,300 gallons of mash and we make about three barrels of whiskey on each distillation. Uh, at Asheville Distilling Company, we've got a German still. Uh, we would have loved to have purchased an advanced American still, but frankly the Germans are ahead of us in technology. They do more complex distillations and just from a fundamental analysis, there's roughly 400 legal distillers in the U.S. There's over 28,000 legal distillers in Germany. So they've been doing it longer, they've been doing it better. We're very fortunate to have what is now the largest German still ever built. We found that our palates are suited to clean but flavorful spirits. Uh, when we take those clean spirits and we put them in a barrel, it doesn't take long to age. When you strip away the impurities from an alcohol, such as the heads and the tails, and you only put the hearts in the barrel, it can age in weeks, months, but uh, rarely does it take years. Uh, most of our whiskeys are aged over a year. Uh, we find that if we age them much longer than that, they become too oaky, too rich. So again, it's a very different model that we're using here at Asheville Distilling Company. Uh, we're not trying to make what traditional whiskeys are in America because there's plenty of them. We're trying to make a new style spirit, one that's soft and gentle and soft and easy on the palate. And through all this complex technology and all our science, 
uh, it really boils down to two things, engineering out burn and bite. If it's just barreling, we're transferring it with a pump into a barrel with a hose. If we're bottling, this is a forehead vacuum filler. Everything's done by hand here, so when our bottle says handcrafted, it really means it. Every cork goes in by hand with a hammer. Every label goes on by hand with hands. So uh, nothing happens here automated. It literally is handmade with love. Mm. Makes me a little nervous. There's more mouth feel. I am an Añejo tequila drinker. I like Don Julio Añejo, and that's my favorite, but I've got to tell you that this right here rivals that. And, and here we go. Lasso the Moon. Our guests absolutely love uh, the drink. Uh, it's actually our number one selling uh, handcrafted cocktail. Hey, look, blonde. I know. What better to be reviewed by a blonde? Wow. Not like the moonshine I had in college. Oh, that is so unique. You still get that creaminess, that vanilla from the corn, but at the same time, I'm tasting the spiciness of the wheat. It's like, I don't know, it's it's like <laughs> rye whiskey in, in, in a really high corn bourbon had a baby. I love it. It's Whoa, that is amazing. Hmm. I go out walking after midnight Out in the moonlight Just like we used to do I'm always walking after midnight Searching for you That's <sighs> good. Some call it moonshine. Some call it American heirloom whiskey. We just call it Troy and Sons.